Hello there! Have you ever wanted to learn how to sing harmony? Well, in today's video and in the videos that follow this in this series, I'm going to introduce you to some basic harmony theory. And in today's video, I'm going to introduce you to the most basic concept in vocal harmony and give you some advice and some homework. So when we're talking about harmony, we're really talking about a sort of alternative melody that complements the main melody or the lead melody. And usually that harmony line is harmonically pleasing. So whether you want to sing in an a cappella group or a choir or a barbershop quartet, even if you want to sing lead vocals, it's a really good idea to learn how to harmonize. So if you're a lead singer, learning to be able to harmonize will help you be able to come up with great backing vocals, great harmonies on your recordings of original songs. If you're someone who would love to sing runs and riffs, it's a good idea to learn harmony because those runs and riffs are often based on harmony parts. And there's one other great reason why a lead singer should learn how to sing harmony, and that is because there are moments when the lead singer wants to deviate from the lead melody to be able to build a song further, to add drama, to build the song to its climax. Sometimes a song in its original key is not quite right for the singer. It's in a bad key for that particular singer. And so if the singer knows a little bit about harmony theory, then he or she can create a sort of an alternative melody line and still be able to sing lead vocals. So I will say right out of the gate that I am not an expert in harmony theory and that harmony for the longest time was a little bit of a handicap for me. I've actually had to work really, really hard at learning to be able to listen to music differently, to be able to hear the harmonic possibilities. This past year, I actually taught a group of teens a cappella singing, which was a huge stretch for me, but it was a great growing experience, and I will continue to teach that class in the upcoming year, another class of it. I've had to learn to change how I listen to music, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in a moment. So let's talk about this concept of parallel harmony. In parallel harmony, also known as harmonic parallelism and parallel voice leading, the harmony line essentially follows the lead melody line. So whenever the lead melody line goes up, so too does the harmony line. And whenever that lead melody line goes down, so too does the harmony part. Now, typically the interval stays roughly the same, but this isn't necessarily always the case. So in parallel harmony, we're not necessarily focused on whether or not the notes, the, the intervallic distance between the notes is maintained precisely. Instead, we're focused more on the musical relationship between the given tones, between the note that the lead singer is singing and the note that the backup singer or the har person singing harmony is singing. So we want to make sure that that harmonic relationship is maintained and also that the key signature of the song is intact. Now, I don't know about you, but I love, love, love the music from the 60s and also the 50s. And that was a time when there was a really strong emphasis placed on harmony. A lot of the folk and pop and rock singers at the time used a lot of harmony. And groups like the Mamas and the Papas and Simon and Garfunkel, whom I love, used this parallel harmony very extensively. For example, with Simon and Garfunkel, if you listen to the song Mrs. Robinson, and I'm going to share a little bit of a clip and show how it's scored, you'll see very, very clearly that the harmony line follows the lead melody line with a parallel harmony. The musical distance, the intervallic distance between the notes, remains roughly the same. And whenever that lead melody line moves up or down, so too does the harmony line. And this can create a really interesting texture in the song. And at times, almost an eeriness.
Now you are not going to stick strictly to parallel harmony because that would make for a very uninteresting harmony part. However, it's a really, really good place to start. And there are going to be times, situations, vocally, musically, when singing parallel harmony is just simply not going to work with the underlying chord structure. So let's say you start out following the lead melody at the distance of a major third. So you start to move up and down with that lead melody. But there are going to be times when, for example, there is a minor chord, which means that we have to flat that third. So the musical distance isn't necessarily going to be the same. There may be other chords, for example, suspended chords, in which instead of playing the third, the musicians are playing the second or the fourth. Those are some of my favorite, favorite, favorite chords, suspended chords. And in that case, if you were to try to sing that third, your harmony part would be rather clashy with the lead line. And so you want to instead sing the second or fourth, but that's a lesson for another day. All right, so some quick pieces of advice from me. The first is to stop singing lead melody whenever possible. Make a conscious habit of trying to gravitate instead toward harmony parts. Start to listen to music a little bit differently. Whenever there's a harmony part that you can hear in a song that's playing on the radio or the CD, wherever you listen to your music, start to sing along with that harmony part instead of the lead melody. This is going to help open you up to the many harmonic possibilities that you can work with when trying to build harmony parts. And if the original song, the original recording, doesn't have any harmony parts in that section, Try to make up your own. Try to really listen closely. And if you're like me, you might have to sit down to a piano and really take some time and work it out. I'm not somebody who can typically, on rare occasions I can, but who can typically come up with a harmony part like that. I know there are singers who can do that. That's not me again. It's not something that's ever come really, really naturally for me. And it could partly be because I didn't have a lot of exposure early on to music. And so, I think that that may have impacted my ability to really listen and also for pretty much my entire life when I've sung, I have sung lead melody. I've led worship, I've sung lead in productions, in musical theater productions. I sang lead vocals in multiple bands which meant that I didn't really have a need to sing harmony and as a result I never learned that skill. In the past I've been a little bit like a sheep. I've always kind of gone along and just sort of followed that lead melody and I never really explored harmony fully, completely. And so in recent years as I started to find that I could actually benefit in many ways from learning to sing harmony, that's when I started really working on ear training and trying to develop that skill. And when I'm not involved in worship leadership and I'm sitting in the congregation, I don't follow what the worship pastor is doing. Instead, I try to follow what the backup singers are doing. I try to pay attention to the kinds of harmony parts that they're building. My second piece of advice for you is to start really listening to music that places a strong emphasis on harmony parts. So that could be music from the 50s and 60s, barbershop music, a cappella music, choral music, whatever it might be. Because again, when you start to do that, you're going to start listening differently to music you're going to start hearing all of those harmonic possibilities. And the more exposure you have to this type of music, the better at listening you're going to become and the better at harmony you're going to become. You just need to build new habits. And my third piece of advice and final piece of advice today is to start learning to accompany yourself on a musical instrument. You don't have to be a phenomenal musician to do this. You just need to be able to learn some basic chord structures on a keyboard or a guitar. And when you do that, you start being able to hear the relationship between the various notes within the chord structure and also how the line that you're singing fits with those various notes in the chord. And you can then start to also hear how your voice fits with those lead melody notes. And your homework until I record the next video on harmony is to sit down to the piano or guitar and play a given chord and move that chord around and follow the third or the fifth of that chord. Wherever it moves, you follow and start to be able to listen 
for that particular note, that particular tone within the chord structure. And that again is going to help you start to hear music a little bit differently and help you to find again those harmonic possibilities. So in the next videos in this series, I'm going to talk about some different types of harmony patterns that we can employ to create much more interesting harmony parts. So please stay tuned for the rest of this series. In the meantime, click the thumbs up button to let me know that you appreciated the content of this video and subscribe to this channel so that you'll receive notifications when those videos are up. Thanks for watching.